liberal viewer present. So one of the things keeping me busy recently has been helping my local chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union fight the acceptance in Sacramento of a Homeland Security grant of over $600,000 to buy dozens of surveillance cameras and four mobile surveillance vans that will move my city more under the watchful eye of Big Brother than ever before. And if you think references to Big Brother are exaggerated, consider the predictably positive story I saw on Fox News last month describing the surveillance cameras just up the Pacific Coast in Bill Gates' hometown like this. In Medina, Washington, the city Bill Gates calls home, they have a high-tech approach to fighting crime. It's a system of cameras that captures every vehicle passing through town. Then the license plate numbers are checked for any felony warrants almost instantly. Now, as you can imagine, some critics aren't too happy with this system. And I guess I'd be one of those critics along with the rest of the ACLU because, among other reasons, every study of these surveillance cameras, including studies of the near total surveillance coverage in London, shows that the surveillance cameras just don't work in preventing or solving crimes. And you can see several such studies at tinyurl.com slash camera studies. Part of a wealth of information the ACLU has made available on the website urbeingwatch.us. And so with all these facts on our side, my local ACLU chapter went to the media holding a press conference resulting in sound bites like the one from Jim Uptograph, the chair of our local chapter, on our local CBS News affiliate that you can see here. There is no evidence that's been presented by the city that indicates that these surveillance cameras will lower the crime rate here in Sacramento. And that's a fact, but unfortunately local news stations don't seem to do too well informing their viewers about facts when all the facts are on one side, preferring just to report the controversy, as you can see when that same local CBS report let a spokesman for the police department respond with the factless argument that you can see here. Surveillance cameras do work in solving crimes. Uh, whether it reduces crime, we believe so, but that's a little harder to gauge because how do you gauge something that's not occurring? Hmm, that's a pretty disingenuous argument, especially considering that I and other members of my local ACLU chapter met with representatives from the police department the previous week and gave them lots of facts. As you can see, Sacramento Deputy Police Chief Sam Summers admitting when he proposed this surveillance project to the Sacramento City Council last Tuesday night in this clip. We also met with representatives from our local ACLU, and a couple of them are here tonight, and I'm sure they're going to speak. And I believe, and I hope that uh, they feel the same way also, that our meeting was beneficial and in understanding their concerns. And we have also asked them to give us what they may consider a model policy in using these type of cameras, or if they have a list of concerns that they'd like us to address in a policy um, if we actually accept these funds and, and move forward with this project. And after Deputy Summers spoke, about 10 members of the public spoke, almost all opposing the cameras, including the Reverend Ashia O'Day, a member of my local ACLU chapter board and an expert in police practices who suggested the reasonable alternative use of the money that you can see here. This is money that could be better spent. I would rather see more officers, or if you're going to put in cameras, put them in the police cars so we can see what they're doing. We need more cameras in the police cars so that we can monitor what's happening on the street. That's a way to take care of it. I mean, if you really want to get some cameras and really want to watch something, that'll have some effect on a crime, monitor our, our officers and what they're doing. Hmm, and for those not moved by the Reverend's suggestion of reasonable alternatives like more officers or patrol car cameras that might actually reduce crime, the council also heard a more emotional argument from the vice chair of my local ACLU chapter, Cress Felucci, who explained. As a Vietnam vet, I wanted to add that, it, you know, I, I think I, uh, I fought in that war, I know Ray did, uh, because we were fighting for freedom. And freedom is, is supposed to be what makes unique, what, what makes American, America really unique. So we have this freedom, we're willing to give up some of our, some of our um, security for freedom. But for those not moved by that Vietnam veteran's call for freedom or the reverend's suggestion of better alternatives that might actually reduce crime, I also spoke to the council near the end and gave some conditions the city council needed to consider imposing before installing any cameras, including putting in place some kind of accountability, as you can see me argue here. Accountability is the first issue this council must spend some time considering before taking the so-called free money that will cost us all part of our civil liberties. Those proposing these significant intrusions on our privacy must also propose some way of tracking if the cameras are providing any benefit in exchange for the privacy they take away. If they say the cameras solve crimes, they should provide data showing the number of crimes actually solved by the cameras and report that data regularly to the public. I went on to talk about other kinds of accountability, like reporting comparative crime rates between areas with and without cameras, but 
In addition to accountability, I also discuss the need for written policies safeguarding people's privacy, as you can see me argue here. This council needs to impose safeguards on these cameras before even considering going ahead with the project. In different meetings with the ACLU, representatives from the police department have told us that some of what the cameras view will be blurred out with something called privacy masking. We've been told generally that houses, apartments, and maybe motel parking lots will be blurred out, but there's no, nothing in writing. There's no actual policy written down, so there's no guarantee. And I went on to talk about the need for other safeguards, like prohibiting surveillance at free speech demonstrations and limiting the use of license plate images and facial recognition software. And unfortunately, it was only these suggested conditions about accountability and safeguards for the cameras and not all the evidence arguing against installing the cameras at all that got the intention of the city council, which did approve accepting the cameras, but through the legislative process, first as an amendment, then as a substitute motion, and finally accepted as an amendment, Council Member Steve Cohn added this condition. Before expending uh, dollars on the program that staff would bring back for council consideration and policy on how to protect privacy and ensure, <coughs> excuse me, accountability. Uh, uh. And that's the best we could get so far, with the Sacramento City Council accepting over $600,000 in surveillance money with only those small conditions, though... As the process continues, with the truth on our side, I'm thinking we may do better, but I want to know what you think. First, have you noticed an increase in the amount of government surveillance where you live? And whatever your answer to that first question, given the total lack of evidence that government surveillance increases public safety, what do you think accounts for the increasing use of government surveillance in the name of public safety? I, YouTube, you decide.